What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna use extensions in order to model a sci-fi style crate inside of SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so for this video, we're gonna be using three different extensions, all of which you can get from the Sketchication plugin store, which I will link to in the notes down below. Um, but we're gonna to want to have Fredo Corner, tools on surface, and joint push pull. And so together, these are gonna allow us to work on some of the curved surfaces um, of our model. And so what we wanna do is let's start off by creating a box. So we're just gonna draw a simple box, maybe something about this big. Um, we're not gonna get super precise with it. So we'll say maybe it's gonna be three feet wide by eight feet long. Um, and again, you don't have to be really precise on this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna push pull this up so that we've got a crate about this size. So that's probably a little bit big, but I think it's gonna work for what we're trying to do. Um, so the next thing I wanna do, and the reason that we have Fredo Corner um, enabled is because we wanna use that to round off our edges. Cause we're gonna assume that this is gonna be more of a rounded box, right? Instead of a, in, instead of a square box, we're gonna assume this is gonna have curves all along the edges. So the way that we can do that is we're just going to activate Fredo Corner with the round corner function right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and move these out of the way. What I wanna do is I just wanna double click on this object right here. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna select all of the faces. So you can see how these have been act or this, these have been selected in here. And this is gonna show us how far these are going to be offset. So you can adjust the offset um, to maybe something like four inches, just like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click off of this in order to generate those edges. So you can see how what this did if we were to turn on our hidden geometry, is this came in here and this rounded off all of these different edges. So now we can go ahead and we can exit that tool. And that's probably the last we're gonna use of Fredo Corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out the little menu by clicking the X button. But now what I wanna do is I want to turn off my hidden geometry. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna use a modeling trick that we use where things are going to repeat on our object, right? And so because things are going to repeat on our object, what I wanna do is I just wanna cut this in half because I only wanna model those things once. So I'm just gonna draw an edge up here and then I'm gonna draw a rectangle. So tap the R key and then tap the right arrow key to lock that to the red axis. And I'm just gonna draw a rectangle that runs through this object right here. And then I just wanna select the object right click and click on the button for intersect faces with model. So then we can erase out this plane. But basically what that did is that came in here and that intersected our model with that face. So now I can delete out half of it, right? So I've got half of this object right here. And for now, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this face in here. Um, we may do some stuff with solids later or we may not. But um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a copy of this using the move tool. So I'm just gonna take the whole thing, make a copy and just move it over here. And so what we wanna do is we wanna have an object where if we adjust one side, the other side adjusts as well. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna select this whole thing, right click on it, and we're gonna make it a component. And we're just gonna call this box half. And so then I'm just gonna make a copy of this using the move tool. So tap the M key, click on this point and tap the control key. And then I'm gonna use the scale tool in order to flip it. So notice how I can use the scale tool to flip this to negative one. Then I can move this back together like this. So you can see how now what I have is I've got this box in here and we can clean up this edge later. Don't worry about that for right now. I've got this box in here that's um, basically got two halves. So if I was to come in here, for example, and model something out on the top face of this, so let's say we were gonna have like a recessed area or something like that. Notice how these changes are gonna happen in this other copy as well. They're just gonna be flipped across the axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna push pull this down a little bit. And so now all I have to do is model on one half of this for the changes to show up on the other half. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to add a little detail in here. So I'm just gonna draw a line across here. And then I'm gonna draw the same line across here. And then I'm just gonna push pull this in a little bit. So let's say we push pull this in eight inches. Then I'm gonna give this a little taper just by moving this edge in 
like this. So we'll move it in maybe an inch and a half. So we'll do the same thing over here. So eight inches, inch and a half. So we've got some kind of detail on our sci-fi box here. And so this is where things get a little tricky and this is where we need to start using extensions. And so the first thing I wanna do now is I want to create the top of my box, right? Because this is gonna act as if it was a box and so it needs a lid and then a base piece. And so this is one area where we wanna have tools on surface from Fredo 6 installed. You could come in here and um, turn on your hidden geometry and just trace this in here a little bit at a time, but it's a lot faster to use tools on surface. So basically what this extension does is it allows you to work on different surfaces um, that aren't necessarily uniform. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the line on surface tool in order to draw a line along this object. So notice what that does. And I'm just gonna draw a line to this point right here, but notice how that draws a line that follows along the curve of this object. So then what I can do is I can just click right here. And what that's done is that's allowed me to really quickly create a line right here. Well then, I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode and I'm gonna copy this down just like this. So just a little split, something like this. And so what that's done is that's given me a separate face along this object, right? But remember with a box like this, this is gonna be recessed a little bit. And so this is why we need joint push pull installed. Joint push pull is an extension for SketchUp that allows us to push pull curved faces and multiple faces. And so in this case, what that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to select this face, activate joint push pull, and then we're just gonna single click and move our mouse and what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to recess this a little bit. And so a couple things about this. So the first thing is we wanna make sure that the finishing is set to classic push pull. We want it to erase the original face, otherwise you'll have a face left in here. The other thing is for this object, we wanna make sure that we have not checked the box for generate as a group because I just want this to be a part of my geometry for my object. So then I can click in here and click again and notice what that did is that created a recess all the way along this box right here. So now we've got this gap in here, which is basically what a gap might look like um, of a lid of an object. And so now I wanna add some more detail. So what I wanna do to start off is I wanna start by drawing a rectangle on surface. So, because I wanna add some fins in here um, that are gonna act as some detailing, and then I also wanna thicken some edges over here. So, this tool is gonna to allow us to do that really easily. And so what I wanna do is I wanna click on this, first of all, to activate the tool, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me a tool that'll let me draw a rectangle on a face like this. But, what I wanna do first is I wanna make sure that I have this set so that it's gonna start with a central point. So make sure you click right here. So then I can come find the midpoint of this object. I can set a width, which is not gonna be very wide. And then I can set a length like this. So notice how what that does is that draws this object on this face. And so now I wanna use the move tool in copy mode to create some copies of this face. So just select the face, tap the M key, and then single click and tap the control key. What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to create a copy on this face. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna type in times six and hit the enter key. Well, what, that do, what that did is that created six copies of this object. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'll just use the move tool in copy mode, click right here and then type in times six and hit the enter key. Well, notice how what that's done is that's split this face in here. So I can come in here and I can select all of these different faces like this. And then I can activate joint push pull in order to give them thickness. And so we're just gonna click in here and just move our mouse out instead of in. Like remember how before we use the in function um, in order to create our face here? Well, this time we want these to come out so that we've got fins on the side of our box like this. 
notice how when I click, that's going to create these different fins. But one thing you might want to think about doing when you do that, just for ease of applying materials, is you might want to select the option for generate as group when you do this. So then if I generate all of these fins, instead of them coming in here as raw geometry, they get placed in here as groups. And that means when I finally come back in here and apply materials, so like a gray color or something like that, you can apply materials to these really quickly instead of having to pick up every single one of those faces because they're all grouped together. So let's say we wanted to come in here and add another detail. So in this case, maybe something longer and narrower like this. Notice how in this case, for whatever reason, this didn't generate the edge of our box. Well, because this is just along the edge right here, you can just come in here and just draw these edges in in order to finish this face off. But then I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode. I'm gonna copy this over here as well. So now I've got these two faces and I can either push pull them out like this, or I could also push pull them in in order to get a little bit more of a recess, which I think I like a little bit better. So you can kind of do this either way. Um, but then we're just gonna do the same thing on our edges over here. So we're just gonna find a point and we'll just generate this surface right here. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. We'll align it like this. Well then you can use joint push pull in order to thicken these out. And remember when you're going outward, sometimes it is easier to generate those as a group just for material application a little bit later. So from here, you can kind of detail this out however you want. Since this is a flat face, you could just come in here and just draw a shape along here. And really kind of do whatever you want with that. So we could just create something simple like this. And push pull it in. Maybe use the scale tool in order to scale this face in. So you can kind of get cr as creative as you'd like with this when you do it. And for whatever reason, this wasn't centered on this face, but since it's raw geometry, I can move it over. You just have to be a little bit careful with how you do that. So like for example, I think we're gonna be aligned with the center right there. So that's gonna work fine. But then you can just come in here and you can just apply materials to this. So for example, some of these faces might have darker colors. So these groups might have kind of a darker color right here. Then you might have lighter colors on some of your inset faces and then just kind of an overall gray in the other areas. So maybe something like this. And so one other thing that I can show you is if you double click in here and you tap the E key to activate the eraser, notice how there's an option here for shift equals hide. So if I hold the shift key and I drag it over these central edges right here, I can hide them so that they're not gonna show up in my model and this will be a much smoother transition. So that's something that can be helpful if you're using mirrored objects like this, is you can just hold the shift key with the eraser tool and hide these edges in order to make things look a lot smoother. So I will link to some other videos about these extensions on this page as well. So if you do want to learn more about them, you can do that through those links. Big thank you to my supporters on Patreon for voting on this extension. Um, if you do want to support the show and vote on the extension I cover every week, check out that link on this page as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.